By 2001, DNA had proven the East Area Rapist and the original Night Stalker were the same person. But who? California investigators had the man's DNA, but no idea who was responsible for dozens of rapes and a string of gruesome murders. Growing DNA technology allowed for statewide testing of criminal databases, but the pool was small, only those convicted of a felony. Initial searches with the killer's DNA failed to yield any hits. There's a serial killer out here, and we haven't identified him. We've uh, compared all of what we have, the database that we have, and uh, no identification, so this person is on the loose. As law enforcement throughout the state of California shared case details in the race to find the killer, they discovered a potential link to yet another string of terrible crimes. Investigators now saw eerie parallels between the East Area Rapist, the original Night Stalker, and the notorious Visalia Ransacker. Over 110 burglaries in the city of Visalia from April of 1974 to essentially December of 1975. And there is a behavior within those burglaries that suggests we're dealing with a sex offender. And we're seeing a progression and an evolution in the Ransacker series. So it was the thought of uh, many investigators, myself included, that the Ransacker uh, evolved into and became the East Area Rapist, who evolved into and became the original Night Stalker. Meanwhile, Joe D'Angelo continued to work and live here in Citrus Heights, even after he and his wife Sharon separated in 1991. The family life ended then, and after that, I don't think he dated, he didn't have friends over, the house was just him there. Neighbor Grant Gorman told me a chilling story about what he and his sister often heard on the other side of this fence. On a warm nights, my brother and sister and I would sleep in this backyard and we'd listen to Joe throughout the night yelling. So it happened on a regular basis, these blow-ups. Oh yeah, he had a lot of torment inside of him. He, was, he didn't like himself, I think. What was he yelling about, typically? I remember it was about death. He would be yelling and arguing, uh, really macabre, really scary things. And my sister would always say that he had aliens living in his attic because it seemed like he was just yelling at imaginary people sometimes. But as Joe D'Angelo grew older, his neighbors started to notice him less. They say he seemed to settle into his routine as a single father of grown children and eventually a grandfather. He continued to live relatively quietly, but also in plain sight for all to see. There's no indication that in recent years he was concerned at all of living in this area where you were investigating at the time, where law enforcement was still looking into the East Area Rapist. He's absolutely comfortable and he's confident that we weren't close. I can guarantee he's following his case in the media. He's trying to figure out exactly what's going on. But he still was comfortable enough to carry out his normal living activities. So. Whatever he was seeing wasn't scaring him to where he thought he had to, to, to run and actually get out of the state or get out of the country. Curious to know more about Joe D'Angelo, I set out to find others who spent time with him before his arrest. I found them at the Save Mart Distribution Center in Roseville, where D'Angelo worked from about 1990 to 2017. Some of D'Angelo's former co-workers agreed to talk to me about Joe. Were there things that Joe did that could be seen as compassionate? I mean, he, as far as caring for other people, I could see that. Um, Joe was the type of person, if you needed help, he was there for you. Richard Mangang considered D'Angelo one of his best friends. The two fished together at least once a week. It taught me to be a better man for the family. You know, I'm not, I'm not always perfect, you know, no one is. In what way did he teach you to be a better man for the family? I would tell him things that went on in my house, okay, certain things. Troubles. Yeah, troubles. And he would tell me I need to go back and do such and such to fix that problem. So he gave you advice? Oh, yes, he did, a lot of times. Family, according to Bill Helms, another close friend and former co-worker, was important to D'Angelo. He was a great father 
put his daughters through medical school. And that's all his life was his daughters and his granddaughters. He even stayed on the job later, didn't he? Longer? I believe it was seven years past, past where he had to. Just for his granddaughter? And to pay off all of his bills. And do you find yourself sometimes, Bill, thinking about your interactions with him and characteristics about him and trying to make connections or wonder about moments or things that he may have said? If he did this, there was two Joes. There was Joseph D'Angelo and Joe D'Angelo. And the Joe that we knew in the shop, none of us think that he could have ever done anything like that.